Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Sunday worship at St. Matthew's. It's great to be back together again. And uh, welcome wherever you are watching this in your homes. And as I always say, please do uh, join in. And I hope that as we worship today, that you will meet with the living God. Today, we're thinking about submitting to God's authority. We say that Jesus is our Lord. What does that mean in practice? What are the aspects of our lives that perhaps we need to give over to God? And as we continue to work through Matthew's gospel, Ermela is going to be helping us to think about that today. Uh, we're going to be thinking about our new um, interview series, which is starting next week. And as usual, we've got a number of church members who are helping out behind the scenes and with our music today. So thank you to all them and their contributions. And thank you especially to Steve, who's doing the technical stuff behind the scenes today. It's been another difficult week, hasn't it, through this, uh, this continuing pandemic, the journey we're all going on. And I suspect we're all having a mix of feelings. We're perhaps worried about the weeks and months that are coming up. Uh, through the autumn and the winter we need to bring all that to God and to seek him to seek him as our strength and our refuge and our inspiration today so as we bring to God all that's going on in our lives at the start of our worship uh, let's say together the opening prayer which is on the screen Lord I come to you because you have the words of life I come to you because you have the word of hope I come to you because you are the word of love that I need to hear. I come to you to give you thanks and praise and worship. Lord, I have come. Fill me afresh with your Holy Spirit. For Jesus' sake. Amen. So our musicians are going to lead us in our first song now, Holy, Holy, Holy. And then after that, Tim is going to lead us through the next part of our service.
Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to Trinity 16. We continue the service this morning with our opening prayer. Lord, speak to us that we may hear your word. Move among us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Now our confession and absolution. Do take a few moments of quiet to bring to mind times during the past week when we have not been as close to God as we ought. We have wandered from your paths, yet your truth leads us home. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have failed to live as your children, yet your love restores us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We are marred by our sin, yet your power heals, heals us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from all our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now head back over to Rachel and the music group for our next song, Lord, You Have My Heart. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Jesus, take my life and lead me on. Lord, you have my heart, and I will search for yours. Let me be to you a sad. Show your 
Collect for Trinity 16 Lord of creation, whose glory is around and within us, open our eyes to your wonders, that we may serve you with reverence and know your peace at our lives' end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So as I think most of you know, over the last few months during the pandemic, uh, we've been hearing lots of frontline stories, uh, interviews with members of our church who have different frontline roles uh, that have been particularly significant in these last few months. Uh, we thought that we'd slightly uh, change the focus of our interviews over the next few months, but that it has been really great to be able to hear about different members of our church and perhaps in normal times we don't get a chance to hear their stories. So in the next few months uh, we're going to move away from frontline stories and instead have an interview slot which we're calling This Time Tomorrow. And so we're going to talk to lots of different church members whose uh, life uh, when they're not at church or watching church, church on a Sunday uh, involves all sorts of different things. Uh, people who have paid jobs, people who have voluntary jobs, people who work at home, people who are retired, all sorts of different jobs. And the questions we're going to be asking are very simply these. What will you be doing this time tomorrow? What joys will you be looking forward to? What challenges will you be facing? And in what ways can we pray for you? Uh, to get this series going, I've approached quite a number of people to see if they'd like to be interviewed over the next few weeks. But if you would like to offer to be someone who is interviewed in that way, please get in touch with me and we'd be really happy to fit you in as soon as we've got a slot. Anyway, I hope you will look forward to that and give us a chance to hear about more of our church members, to get to know each other better and to pray for each other in what we do on our, in our own front lines. Um, Monday to Saturday, if you like. And to give you a bit more flavour about what this series is going to involve, we're now going to watch a short video about this time tomorrow, which is being produced by the Diocese of London. It's the simplest thing to do, but it makes a real difference. It's exciting to hear where God is already at work. Each day, each week, through ordinary lives. It means we pray for the ordinary things of life, for people where they are across our city. This Sunday, could you ask, where will you be? Where will you be this time tomorrow? Where will you be this time tomorrow? Our reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Matthew 21, verses 23 to 32, and it is read by Mason Simpson. Following that, um, Ermela leads us in a talk. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the temple, the chief presents and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said by what authority, authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you would tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority 
I'll do these things that did the wisdom of John came from heaven or was it human organ and that they agreed with another one another if we stay from heaven he will stay to us when when why then you did you not believe him but if we say or oh, human organ will be afraid to the crowd for all required done as a prophet so they answered jesus will do no and he said to them neither will i tell you authority i am doing these things what do you think a man had two sons he went to first and said son go and work in the presence today find your today he answered i will not but later he changed his mind and went the father went to the second and said the same and he answered i'll go sir but he did not go which of the two did the will of his father say the first jesus said to then true truly i'll tell you tax collectors and the process are you going to are you going into the kingdom of god ahead of you for for john came to you in the way of righteousness and you did not believe him but tax collectors and the present suits believed him and even after you saw it you did not change but you did it not change your minds and believed him this is the gospel of the lord praise to you O lord O O christ thank you mason if we were together in church maybe i could have asked mason which son he'd be let us pray may i speak in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen Cruz was raised in Puerto Rico. Both his parents were heavily into witchcraft and spiritualism, and he experienced repeated physical abuse and neglect at their hands. So in order to escape uh, his violent and traumatic childhood, he fled to New York City in the mid-50s, and he soon got caught up in the gang violence that was sweeping the city. fearless and seemingly immune to physical pain he rose through the ranks of the notorious mau mau gang and became a warlord cruz's life was a downward spiral of violence and dysfunction then one day a skinny preacher david wilkerson came to the streets of brooklyn delivering a message for nikki cruz jesus loves you nikki Cruz threatened to kill the preacher but only several weeks later at one of David Wilkerson's rallies he surrendered his life to Jesus and exchanged his switchblade for the cross of Christ Nikki Cruz is now one of the world's renowned evangelist and his story has been recorded in the book titled The Cross and the Switchblade Let's watch together a, a really short clip from the film titled The Cross and the Switchblade and it dates back to 1970. I'm uh, I'm just a country preacher 300 miles from home. 
But I've got a message for you. Hey! I got a message for you. <laughs> Is there anything in your life you'd like changed? Yeah! Yeah, I'd like to make the rich poor and me rich! <laughs> Now, I know there's some pretty tough guys in this crowd. You wouldn't be afraid to shake hands with a skinny preacher, would you? God loves you, Nicky. You come near me, I'll kill you. Yeah, you can do that. You can cut me up into a thousand pieces and lay them in the street. And every piece will still love you. Who was David Wilkerson that he had such a huge impact in New York, the gang-infested streets of New York in the 1950s and 60s? He didn't really have any, any great credentials that he could boast of. He was just a skinny country preacher from Pennsylvania. Well, he started a street ministry called Teen Challenge, which was later taken over by Nicky Cruz and his wife, Gloria. Nicky himself was transformed from being a warlord and leading a life of violence and crime. Both David Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz submitted to God's authority. So let's turn to our gospel reading for today as we look to Jesus' example in submitting to God's authority. We find the chief priests and the elders questioning Jesus' authority. By what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority, they ask. They thought they were the ones with the power and the status. But instead, they're being shown up by this carpenter's son who is healing people and casting out demons and even forgiving sins. So why not let's just build a little bit of a profile of this Jesus that we see earlier in the chapter. Well, Jesus just didn't look the part of an authoritative figure in the world standards. At the start of the chapter, we see Jesus rides into the city on a donkey. He loses his cool and creates a scene in the temple. He curses a fig tree. And he spoke in riddles and parables most of the time. He even hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes. And yet, he is the savior of the world. He is the reason you and I know love and joy and peace, even when we are caught in the midst of this pandemic, which has caused so much of suffering and death and despair. So what are the signs and the characteristics that, that you and I attribute to someone in authority? Is it their position and status, their connections, their achievements, their reputation? Or maybe it is about how much you, you and I care for the person and to what extent we allow them to influence us to a greater or lesser extent. If we consider this exchange between the chief priests and the elders and Jesus, we notice a distinct difference between the reason for their influence, for their positions. The chief priests and the elders, they leaned on their, their religious education and their standing in society. Jesus submitted to God's authority. In the Great Commission in chapter 28, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So I was reading up on the difference between power and authority. Essentially, power is the strength of will or muscle to accomplish something. And authority refers to being authorized by the one 
who has the actual power. In this instance, the author of creation. Power comes from position and status that has been thrust upon us. And authority is respect and importance that has been earned. Hence why I'm sure you'd agree with me that there is a marked difference between the respect we have for, for Richard and let's say for the first political leader who comes to mind. Now, how did Jesus exercise the authority he had been given? Jesus is the son of God who has conquered sin and death. And yet Matthew tells us in the previous chapter that the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, this is captured beautifully in Paul's letter to the Philippians. He did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The theological term for this emptying of himself is called kenosis. Jesus chose to surrender his heavenly authority and he offers us the, the model of servant leadership. God doesn't force himself on us. He exercises his authority over you and me in love and compassion. And in the same way, he calls us to exercise the authority that he gives to us. Have you ever questioned God's authority? Not necessarily in, in a rebellious way or someone who has turned away from God. Not even like the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who used it to try and trap Jesus. But maybe when, um, when you and I don't understand what he is doing or, or not doing in, in your life or in the lives of those you love. What about in the middle of difficult circumstances? Or at times when life feels like it is spiraling out of control. Hey, even in the midst of this Corona Costa, and I know I have been up and down that um, over the last several months. And Jesus means business. He truly steps into our everyday lives and he journeys with us. So, I have um, a humbling example to, to share from last week, and I have uh, Jonas's permission to share it. So we had a disagreement, and both of us withdrew um, rather unhappily into our own spaces. I'm not aware if you know any of the, the terminology that is used in the marriage course. And I'll let you guess um, who the rhino is in our relationship and who the, the hedgehog is. Well, um, I was upset that Jonas hadn't reached out to me and help soothe me in my distress because, of course, I'm the emotional one. So out I stepped for my evening walk. And as I talked to Jesus, he nudged me quite pointedly. And he asked me whether I was submitting to his authority or whether I was being selfish and trying to, to control, exercise some control over Jonas. He asked me to get off my high horse and asked for me to be the one to reach out to, to Jonas and to remember that he is the one who, who comforts me. Jesus told the parable of the two sons, where the father asked both of them in turn to go to the vineyard and work. One of them refused, but later changed his mind and went. The other one said he would go, but didn't follow through. There are times when we may say the right things, but not act upon them. And there are other times when we realize the error of our ways 
and do what Jesus requires us to do in a particular situation. Last Sunday, we heard about the calling of Matthew. I'm sure grateful that Jesus hung out with, with tax collectors and all the other people that the chief priests and the elders frowned upon. In verse 31, Jesus says that the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before the so-called people of God. This comes from them submitting to God's authority and his calling upon their lives and his calling upon your life and mine too. And from the examples of Matthew, David Wilkerson and Nikki Cruz, we find that not only did they submit to God's authority, but they stepped out in that same authority. When we respond and submit, God can bring about radical transformation. Now, the first time David Wilkerson traveled to New York to reach out to gang members who were on trial, he was thrown out of the courtroom. In this photograph, which the, the press captured um, just outside the, court, the courthouse, this photograph actually helped open some of the doors for his street ministry with the gangs in New York. I wonder this morning, are there any doors that you and I need opened or even closed? What are the areas of, of our lives that we need to submit to God's authority? Do we need to empty ourselves like our servant king did? Do we need to let go of power and control and assume the authority that he has on offer? Well, the words of the, the chorus um, that come to mind are, this is our God the servant king. He calls us now to follow him, to bring our lives as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. If we were in church together this morning, I'm sure we could have sung that, that chorus. This is our God, the servant king. And maybe, just maybe, not in a way that challenges, but as people notice, someone may wonder or even ask, by what authority are you doing these things? And who has given you this authority? And we can turn around and say, this is our God, the servant king. Amen. Thank you, Ermia, Ermila, for that inspiring talk. We now... Uh, Come to our next song with Rachel singing O Sacred King, followed by Sheila leading us in our intercessions. O sacred King, O holy King, how can I honor you rightly? Honor that's fit for your name, O sacred friend. Oh, holy friend, I don't take what you did lightly. Friendship instead of disgrace, for it's the mystery of the universe. You're the God of holiness, yet you welcome souls like me. And with the blessing of the Father 
all the times you discipline the ones you love. There's kindness in your majesty. Jesus also recognize your power. Know just how wonderful you are that you draw. Sacred King, O oh, Holy King, how can I honor you rightly? Honor that's fit for your name, O oh, Sacred Friend. Oh, holy friend, I don't take what you did lightly. Friendship instead of disgrace, for it's the mystery of the universe. You're the God of holiness, yet you welcome souls like me. And with the blessing of your Father's heart, you discipline the ones you love. There's kindness in your majesty. Jesus also recognizes your power. Know just how wonderful. After each section of prayer, I will leave a short silence for you to bring before God your own prayers. The petition will be, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we come to you with our different experiences during this week, and we give you thanks for being with us during our joyful and sorrowful times bringing your strength and love to every situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you today the concerns for the health of our nation as we see a rise in the number of COVID cases. We ask that you guide us as individuals to make wise choices to protect the health of those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose livelihoods are at risk as restrictions to what we consider as normal life remain in place. We especially pray for those in the hospitality and leisure industries, which have been the hardest hit by the restrictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are unwell at present. We pick, particularly pray for those who have experienced delays in treatment due to the pandemic. We also pray for Eileen Daly and in the silence, please bring before God anyone on your heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you will comfort the families of those recently bereaved. From our own congregation, we particularly pray for Daphne Hall and Angela Doro and Kathy Atkins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> 
we bring before you our bishops and all clergy across London for the tireless ways they have been working, adapting to changing circumstances at short notice. We give you thanks for Richard and his family for all they do for us as a congregation. We give you thanks for Vicky's safe return to the UK. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the PCC meet tomorrow evening, we ask for your wisdom upon their discussions as they consider the planning for services over the coming season and the finances of our church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we go out this week, Lord, we pray that we will do so in your authority and not in our own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue with the Lord's Prayer with actions. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, as usual, uh, it's great to be able to just share a bit of news of what's going on in the life of our church. And first of all, we're really pleased that Vicky is back with us, having come back home from Columbia this week. Um, as you know, Vicky's had a really tough time and um, had to say farewell to her mum, uh, who died while she was there. So, but Vicky wanted to come on and just say hello to everyone and say thank you to everyone. So I'm going to pass over to Vicky just to say a few words now. So good morning, Sir Matthew. I am so happy to be here again with you all. And I want to thank you to all of you for your prayer, first of all, but always for your notes or love that you send in to me. I received so many of you notes. Sorry I didn't answer all of you, but I will. I will. I will answer all of you. But all of them was a very, a very good receipt for me and my family. So thank you for being with me. And I repeat that again, I am very, very pleased to be part of Samati family and feeling that I am part of you. So I am here again and i see you soon sometime in the church. So God bless you and thank you for your prayer again. So let me just fill you on a few things coming up uh, in this week. First of all, this afternoon we have our usual three o'clock service of holy communion so please do come to that you're very welcome as you know we have a limit of 30 people we haven't we've just about stayed within that so far so i hope we will this afternoon but you're very welcome to come at three o'clock this afternoon um, we are working towards our church annual meeting which is going to be on the 25th of october and as part of that we're revising uh, our current electoral role so if you are a regular member of St Matthew's Church and you're not currently on our church electoral roll, then please do complete a uh, form. You will hopefully have received a MailChimp email and that has got the form on it. But if you uh, are not on the MailChimp distribution list, then the, um, the electoral roll form is also on our church website. So please access it from there and you have until the 7th of October to get the completed forms back to us. And when it comes to the annual meeting on the 25th of October, um, we're gonna hold that as, a, as an actual face-to-face -face meeting here in church. But also, if you're not able to come to that, you will be able to join in by Zoom and we'll give you details of that near the time. And at that meeting, the uh, 
elections will be held for the church wardens, for three members of the church council, and also three members of the deanery synod. So there will be also details in the next few weeks if any of you would like to stand for any of those posts. Next Sunday, we are marking harvest. And as we have done in the last few years, we're going to be inviting donations of food and other items for using West Drayton Food Bank, which, as you know, operates from here. And the way it's going to work is if you would like to give donations to the food bank, there'll be two opportunities to do that. First of all, next Sunday between 12.30 and 1.15, then you can bring the, the contributions to the church here or if you're coming to the service at three o'clock next sunday you can bring them with you then and then food bank volunteers will be coming after the three o'clock service to collect all of the contributions and just to say that the items that food bank particularly are asking for uh, this year are tinned custard tinned rice pudding tinned spaghetti tinned potatoes deodorants male or female shaving foam or gel uh, disposable nappies, washing machine capsules and tablets, uh, and also shower gel, either male or female. They'll happily take any other donations, but those are the things they particularly want. And separate information has gone out if you're members of the school community about how the school are going to contribute to uh, Food Bank as well. Uh, also, just to say, this week we'll be having our usual morning and evening prayer. As most of you know, we're now doing morning prayer by YouTube Live, uh, which is great. So please do join in with that if you're able to be on YouTube at 9 o'clock, Monday to Friday. Um, also, morning prayer is recorded and put onto YouTube. And evening prayer is also recorded and put onto YouTube at 5 o'clock, Monday to Friday. So I think that's all of the notices for the week. Uh, just a quick mention of birthdays. On the 30th of September, which I think is Wednesday, is it? It's uh, John Luscombe's birthday. It's happy birthday to John that day. The following day, it's Glyne Best's birthday. So happy birthday to Glyne. And just to say, we continue to remember and give thanks for the life of Connie O'Dell, who died recently. Connie would have been 101 on the 2nd of October, where we give thanks for Connie's life and she's with the Lord in heaven, celebrating for eternity. So uh, we're gonna sing happy birthday now and Hayley is gonna lead us in happy birthday, playing the cornet, over to Hayley. For the 
joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen. I'm pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure. His joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, His joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading all my pain I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, amen Come on and sing yes Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. So as we draw towards the end of our service and we go out to serve God, who is the one who has authority over us, but as our servant king, uh, let's seek his blessing in these words. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. May the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love now and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to thank you all for watching today. Many thanks to all who took part in today's service and a special thank you to Ermela for her uplifting talk. I wish everyone a very happy and safe week. Goodbye. <laughs>